بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على من لا نبي بعده وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين My beloved brothers my sisters we are muslim a muslim is a person who submits unto Allah رب العزه والجلال a muslim is a person a muslim is a person who does what Allah Almighty wants. And how do I know what Allah Almighty wants? He sent to us messengers from the very beginning to remind us to worship Him alone, which is the most important message. He sent messengers and from the very beginning, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam reminded his own children to worship Allah alone. Sheath alayhi salam reminded his people, his children, his family to worship Allah alone. Nuh, Noah, may peace be upon him, reminded his people to turn back to Allah alone. And if we go further and further, we will find all the messengers of Allah with exactly the same message. That message was to worship Allah alone. Who is Allah? Allah is the worshipped one. He who made entire creation, that is Allah. He who made you and I, that is Allah. He whom I am going to return to after I die and you and entire creation when it comes to an end will be returning to none other than the one who made this creation in the first place, Allah, Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. So if you look at the message of all the messengers, it is identical when it comes to who you should worship. There was never a discrepancy, never a change. There was never any difference of opinion among the messengers, even though they came one after the other. They all called towards worshiping the maker alone. Whoever made you, you worship him alone. And who is he? He is the worshipped one, Allah, none other than Allah. He has names, he has qualities that are uniquely his. No one shares any of the qualities of Allah to the degree or the level of that which Allah holds. When you say this person is very forgiving, he is not on the level of Allah. Allah is Ghaffarun, Ghafurun, Rahimun, Wadudun, etc. These are the names of Allah. Allah is most forgiving. You and I, we might forgive small things, wait until something big happens, and then something bigger happens, and something even bigger happens. We have limits. Allah has no limits. Allah can do what He wants. He continues to do whatever He wishes, whatever He wants. Nothing happens on earth except by the will of Allah. He knows about it, He lets it be. It is Allah. He is in control. But it's all part of a test for all of us. Life is short. One day is good, one day is bad. One day is for you, one day is against you. My brothers, my sisters, believe in Allah. If you have a relation with Allah, the good day is Alhamdulillah. The bad day is also Alhamdulillah. There are five prayers a day. On a good day, it is five. On a bad day, it is still five. Subhanallah. In fact, when something bad happens, we get closer to Allah. Today, we are seated here. We thank Allah that Allah has given us a chance to sit in His beautiful house. This is the house of Allah. We are so many in number. Why are we here? Because there is an instruction of Allah. You are here and I am here to worship Allah. To listen to a good word that will bring me closer to Allah. To develop my yaqeen and conviction in Allah. Do you have a guarantee that tonight will be a happy night? Do you have a guarantee that you are going to be alive tonight? Tonight is far before tonight. There is no guarantee. People can pass away here and now. Sometimes who knows what might happen as we leave. May Allah Almighty grant us Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah give us a good death. May Allah help us. The reason I say 
that from the very beginning, Allah wants us to worship Him alone. And Allah Almighty wants us to do what he has instructed that instruction. He sent messengers, all these prophets of Allah. And who is the final Nabi? Who is the final messenger of Allah? Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did he teach? When it comes to belief and aqidah, he taught exactly what Jesus taught. May peace be upon him. He taught exactly what Moses taught. May peace be upon him. What was that? Worship your maker alone and no one else. Moses, may peace be upon him, said, worship your maker alone and no one else. Harun, may peace be upon him. Same thing. Ibrahim, the prophet Abraham, may peace be upon him. What did he say? He said, do not worship the sun. Do not worship the moon. Don't worship the stars. Don't worship creation. Worship the one who made you alone. وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ I have turned my face to the one who created the heavens and the earth. Pure, in pure worship of Him alone, and I'm not going to associate partners with Allah. You and I, as Muslims, we do sujood. What is sujood? Sujood is prostration. Umirtu an asjuda ala sab'ati a'zum. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says, I have been instructed to prostrate on seven bones. What are the seven bones? Al jabha, the forehead. And the nose is the same bone. وَأَشَارَ بِيَدِهِ إِلَىٰ أَنْفِهِ وَالْيَدَيْنِ وَالْرُكْبَتَيْنِ وَأَطْرَافِ الْقَدَمَيْنِ The hands, that's another two. So one plus two. The knees, that's another two. That is now five. And then the toes, your toes, they go down, right? When you are in sujood, they are touching the ground. So seven bones. What is that? That is the highest level of ibadah is when you are on the lowest physical point. Subhanallah. Look, my head is on the ground. Allah says, Aqrabu ma yakunul abdu li rabbihi wa huwa sajid. The closest my worshipper is to me when he is in sujood. But where are you? I am right down. Right down to the ground. Subhanallah. When you are close to the ground, you are closer to Allah. Have you thought of it? Allah says, you want to be close to me, the closest you can ever get to me is in the position of prostration, sujood. But you are never ever allowed to make sujood for anyone or anything besides Allah. That is an ibadah and all ibadah, all acts of worship, that is an act of worship and all acts of worship are only and solely for Allah. None other than Allah. Now, if Allah has made me and He told me, worship me alone, how do I know what and how to worship Allah? How do I know? Should I wave my hands? Should I blink my eyes? Should I turn my head? Should I stamp my feet? Should I hit the drums? What should I do? What is going to be pleasing to Allah? Is it from my brain? The answer is no, it's not from your brain. Allah must decide how He wants me to worship Him. I cannot do it on my own. I need to know. Some people when they want to worship Allah, they just do anything and say, I'm sure Allah will be happy. It's worship. What, what are you talking about? You can't just shake your head like this and say, I'm sure Allah will be happy with this. What is that? Where did you get it from? Did someone teach you? If they did, who was it? If it came from Allah through the messengers, you are right. If it came from someone else, you are wrong. No matter how right you think you are, you are wrong because Allah did not teach you that. So acts of worship are solely for Allah and acts of worship are determined solely by Allah. No one else. May Allah Almighty make us strong. You want to read the Quran, read as much as you want. It is an ibadah. You fulfill your five salah, fulfill the farad, then you go to the sunnah, then you go to the nafil as much as you like. But you cannot increase the farad to say, okay, today I'm very happy with Allah, so I'm going to increase instead of four, I will make six. You cannot do that. It's, it is wrong. It is rejected. Man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna raddun. Whoever does a deed that we did not instruct, it is rebounded to them in sin. You cannot do that. You need to listen to what Allah has taught you. So when you worship Allah the way He wants, 
And when you develop a relationship with Allah, how He wishes, what happens to your heart? It becomes strong and pure. You fear none but Allah. You are prepared for the meeting with Allah and you are preparing for the meeting with Allah every day. If you are to die right now, you have hope in the mercy of Allah. Why? Because I'm trying my best to do what Allah wants. This life is full of challenges. Every day there is a challenge. Like I said at the beginning, يَوْمٌ لَكَ وَيَوْمٌ عَلَيْكَ A day for you, a day against you. No problem. Allah is great. I am alive. I will try my best. I have my hands and my feet. I have my ability. I'm going to do my best. If Allah takes what I have away, Alhamdulillah. If Allah takes me away, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I'm gone. What will happen to my family and my children and my women and my whatever? What? Don't worry. Don't worry, my brother. Don't worry. Whatever happened to the families of others, <laughs> yours will also be taken care of. Maybe, can I say? If you are not a good man, maybe your wife will get a better husband than you. May Allah forgive us. <laughs> May Allah grant us forgiveness. Be good. The best from amongst you, khayrukum, khayrukum li ahlihi. Be good to your family. The best from amongst you, those who are best to their family members. May Allah make us strong. So there is one thing we need to develop and that is conviction. Yaqeen. Develop your yaqeen. Yaqeen in what? In Allah. Your faith in Allah. Your tawakkul ala Allah. Tawakkul ala Allah. I lay my trust in Allah. Where was I 20 years ago? Where am I today? Where was I 30 years ago? Where am I today? Wallahi, I am in a better position than I was before. I thank Allah. So if you look at the big picture, you are always winning and gaining. When you came into this world, what did you have? You had nothing. You didn't even have clothes. You were crying. You didn't even know how to speak. You didn't know how to walk. Nothing. And then Allah taught you and slowly but surely he gave you today whatever you have. Did you come to the world with it? Look at your clothes. Look at your things. Look at your watch, your phone. Did you come? Were you born with this? No. Which means you already have more than what you came with. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have more. If Allah takes it away and took it away for as long as he is happy with you and you have a good relation with him, no problem. We are okay. Tomorrow we will start again. Tonight we will start again. Bismillah. And we will build again for Allah. Because Allah will give us. That is yaqeen. Conviction. Look at how our people, sometimes they suffer, right? Everything is going okay. One day there is a big problem. I lost my things. Don't be depressed. Turn back to Allah. Few years ago I didn't have. Then I had. Now today I don't have. I'm going to build again and I will start again. No problem. Alhamdulillah. Thank Allah. Look after your family. Look after your deen. Be convinced. Allah. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ If you are true believers, if you are true believers, lay your trust in Allah. True believers, what do they do? Tawakkul عَلَى Allah. I lay my trust in Allah. Allah will look after me. Allah will take care of me. Allah will provide for me. Did you eat this morning? The answer is yes. Are you going to eat before tonight? The answer is yes. Imagine. How many people are there here? Thousands. How many in the country? Millions. How many in the world? Billions. Every single one has to eat. Did you think of that? Every single one has to eat. Let's not stop there. That is only human beings, billions, right? What about the animals? How many animals are there on earth? Wallahi, there are trillions and quadrillions and more animals. Every day, they have to eat. وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَهَا كُلٌّ فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Allah is telling you, there is nothing that moves on earth except Allah has taken it upon himself to provide for those things. And Allah knows 
when it comes, when it goes, when it is born, when it is going to die, where, where it lives and where it goes out. Allah knows absolutely everything. Everything is written in a book. Allah has written it. Allah knows. So for Allah, it's a small thing to give you a plate of food today, which tastes very nice. For Allah, is it big or small? It is minor. He has given billions of people food today. Do you think he's going to miss you? He will not miss you. Thank Allah. What is the solution? Build your relation with Allah. Allah is the owner of the door of sustenance. Don't knock the wrong door. Knock the right door. Which door must you knock? Knock the door of Allah. He will give you. Who owns everything? Allah. Why should we knock another door besides Allah? Allahumma kfini bi halalika an haramika wa ghnini bi fadlika amman siwak. Oh Allah, grant me sufficiency in halal so I do not do haram. And I am protected from haram. And oh Allah, you sustain me in a way that I don't depend on anyone besides you. You are the one. I will only knock your door, no one else's door. And I will work hard and I will try and I will go through your help. I will do the right things. Knock the door of Allah. Imagine Allah owns entire creation. How can I knock the door of someone else who doesn't even own anything? He owns nothing. How can I knock that door? How? Subhanallah, knock the door of Allah. How can you expect sustenance when you are not in the masjid? How can you expect goodness when you don't have a connection with the owner of goodness? So build yourself. Build the connection with Allah, Salah, Quran, Dhikr, Ibadah, only for Allah. And I will do it every day. Cleanse yourself. You and I are human beings. We make mistakes. We falter. Tawbah every day. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yastaghfirullaha mi'ata marra. In what duration? In a day. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to seek the forgiveness of Allah 100 times. How many times do you seek forgiveness a day? So develop this beautiful relation with Allah. And Allah will give you, Allah will grant you, Allah will provide for you. The conviction is so beautiful that when something goes wrong, you tell yourself, for me, it is wrong. For Allah, it is right. For Allah, it is right. Say, for example, one day you lose something in your business, you lose a family member, someone passes away. For you, as a human being, it is a loss. For Allah, what is it? Is it a loss? No, no ways. For Allah, it is destiny. He planned it for you. Ajabali amril mu'min fa inna amrahu kullahu lahu khair. Amazing are the affairs of a true believer. Because everything that happens to a believer is only good for him. If something positive happens, he does shukr, he thanks Allah, it's good. Something negative happens, he bears patience, it's good. Reward for sabr is great. Did you do sabr yet? Have you done sabr? Someone will say, yes, I did sabr. What happened to you? So different answers from different people. One guy will say, yesterday one mosquito bit me here on my finger. I did a lot of sabr. That was sabr for him. Another guy says, yesterday I tripped and I got hurt on my knee. Sabr. Another guy says, I lost my child, sabr. Another guy says, I lost my family, sabr. Sabr, you see the higher level. Another guy says, I lost my whole business, sabr. There are different levels. Fasbir sabran jameela. Allahu Akbar. Allah is telling Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bear beautiful patience. Allah. This world is temporary, temporary. How many days remaining here? Few. In one year, how many days are they? 365 according to Gregorian, 355 according to Luna, right? Let's say 365. 10 years, how many days? 3,650, right? If you, 20, say 20 years, how many days? Seven and something, right? 7.2. 7,200. So 20 something years, 25 years left for your life. That's not more than 10,000 days. Start counting your days. They are finishing. For 10,000 days in this world, I must already make big, big stress. And I must already, do you understand what I'm saying? 
The days are numbered. My brother, count your days. How many days? 10,000. Start to tick. Maybe before 10,000, you are already gone. Allahu Akbar. And if you are going to stay after 10,000, you will have to retire. Because new young blood will come up and say, please move. Step on the side. Let me do the business. What about me? You just relax. I will give you something. You are lucky. You have someone looking after you. May Allah grant us goodness. Few years in this world. Few days in this world. Don't stress. If today is wrong, tomorrow will be right. And if today is right, something might go wrong according to you tomorrow. According to Allah, it did not go wrong. It was His plan for you and for me. One of the things that Allah has kept for Himself, knowledge, only Allah knows what is going to happen tomorrow. What are you going to earn? What is going to happen to you and to me tomorrow? Meaning in the future, who knows it? Wallahi, wallahi, only Allah knows. Only Allah knows. You can plan, Allah can let the plan go ahead. But you can plan, Allah can change the plan. You can think, Allah knows and He is the only one who knows what will happen tomorrow. So develop your relation with Allah. Plan good things. When you plan to do your salah, Allah will reward you with the intention in Namal A'malu bin Niyat. Allah. Allah Almighty is in charge. He is in control. Why am I saying this? Because in the world today, we are going through very difficult time. Anywhere you go in the world, anywhere you go, anywhere you go, they have different types of challenges. Some worse than others. You talk to me about this place. Today we are in this beautiful masjid, mashallah, in Cape Town. I promise you, my brothers, my sisters, the problems we have and the challenges we face, some people think when they are far away, oh, these guys, they don't have any problems. Everything is there, right? They are very rich. They are very happy. They are very healthy. And they forgot about us. That's what they think, right? But it's not true. You have your own challenges, right or wrong. Today is like this. Tomorrow is like that. Today someone steals. Tomorrow someone pinches. The next day someone is murdered. The following day we have another new problem with immigration or whatever else it may be. All sorts of problems. No one knows your problems. And you sometimes don't know their problems. Everyone has tests. Don't worry. If Allah put you in a position, thank Him. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Alhamdulillah, oh Allah, I'm going to try my best. I'm going to do my best. And pray for the others, reach out to them. Part of Islam is to give. How many pillars in Islam? Five. One is the declaration of faith, shahada. After that, there are four. One of them is to give. Subhanallah, subhanallah. One of the pillars of Islam is to give. Tonight I have a function with Africa Muslims Agency. And the idea is to speak about giving, charities, donation. Wallahi, it is a pillar of Islam. The minute you have something in your pocket, it is part of Islam, a pillar of Islam. Take out something and give. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You think about it? Part of your Islam is to think about poor people and others who don't have. It's part of your Islam. So we ask Allah Almighty to bless us, to give us barakah, to give us sustenance, to give us goodness. I want to end off with one point. And that is my brothers, my sisters. You have in your midst ulama. You have in your midst your sheikhs and your imams. Please develop a good relation with them and respect them and learn from them. Al ulama warathatul anbiya. Any community that does not respect the ulama, they are destroyed. Even if they are rich, they are destroyed. There is no future for them. It's finished. Did you hear what I said? You have your ulama, you have your mashayikh. You have your elders in community and society, the knowledgeable. Make a relation with them. Respect them. Sit with them. Listen to their lessons. Talk to them. Learn from them. Follow what they have to say. 
Take guidance from them. Those are the leaders. They will help you to get closer to Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Any community that has ridiculed its ulama, they are destroyed. Even if they think they are growing. They are far from Allah. So that is the piece of advice I want to give you to say, build your relation with the scholars, with the ulama, and all of us should increase our knowledge and teach one another whatever goodness we know, because we are all brothers and sisters in faith, in the deen of Allah. If I go today, I must be able to leave things for the other generations or for the next generations to take. May Allah Almighty bless every one of us, and may Allah grant us goodness. Aqulu qawli hadha, wa sallallahu wa sallama, wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.